Today, I'm going to be teaching you guys how you can use Ethel Fled more effectively. What's going on, guys? Cheers. Yes, Taco Bell soda, metal straw. We've got to save the turtles, everybody. Let's get it together. Come on. Anyway, today we're going to be talking about Ethel Fled. Okay, she's a popular commander. She's free to play. Everybody's going to get here. She does a nice debuff, a nice AOE, right? You get her pretty early. There's a ton to love about her. I mean, just look at her. She's beautiful. But I'd see a lot of people using Ethel Fled in a way that I just feel doesn't maximize the amount of value you can get out of her. And I'd also go out of my way to say that even players who spend a little bit in this game should still probably be using ethel flood in one of their top five marches if you hear my air conditioner going off over here okay it's fucking 90 degrees in new york so please bear with me this i'm sweating my ass off but i'm still sitting here making videos for you guys so please drop a thumbs up on the video subscribe if you're new around here you guys most of you are not subscribed it helps the channel a ton anyway back to ethel flood okay the primary thing that i'm seeing people do that i think is just not a great strategy is this okay i'm gonna give you guys a second for those of you who are 500 iq you can already see the problem and yes Indeed, the problem is that you can tell this is an Ethel Flood. You can tell. You look, you just look at it. Boom, that's an Ethel Flood. You can see her picture right there. She's got the beautiful red hair, okay? You know it's an Ethel Flood, which means if you see this in the open field or you see it in Champions of Olympia, I see this all the time in Champions of Olympia. I see an Ethel Flood, I kill it. That's just how it is because you see her and you think, okay, she's pretty squishy. She does a lot of AOE. She's got the debuffs. You want to take her out as fast as possible, right? But if it's your Ethel Flood, you don't want to be taken out as fast as possible, right? Because she's a good commander. So you got to change the way you're using her. And look, for those of you who have been spending money in this game and you're an older player and you sort of just put Ethel Flood on the back burner, let me remind you why she's so versatile in a group fight, okay? In a one-on-one -on -one scenario, Ethel Flood, she's good, right? She's good. But in a group scenario where you're your entire alliance is using Ethel Flood. This is huge, okay? Her AoE does not reduce d based on the number of targets she's hitting, okay? You see a ton of other AoE commanders. You can even look at uh, commanders like Esong, right? They deal 15% less damage per target that they hit. Ethel Flood does not fall under that category. Now, she does have a lower damage factor, so it kind of balances out. So don't think that her AoE is bad. It's actually great. It's also a half circle, which is amazing. And that she's reducing enemy stats by 90% for two seconds. Now, two seconds is not a long time, but if you've got five Ethel Floods in the open field, just spraying this debuff all over the place, then everyone's getting 90% uh, stat reduction a ton of the time, right? Even if it only hits, you know, two times in a, in a 10, uh, 10 second cycle, that's 40% of the time uh, th they have their, their stats reduced by 90%. 30% health reduction? Seriously, that's insane. She also takes less counterattack damage by 20%. Everyone talks about Charles Martel's skill. It's 30%. We've got the same thing almost on Ethel Fled, who also has a 10% of a, a chance of a march speed reduction, which means that there's a 10% chance she's going to deal 20% increased damage to that army. There's a lot to love about Ethel Fled, and we're not done. Okay, we're not done. If it's a mixed army, you get 20% increased attack. So there's your quick refresh, okay? If you weren't sold on Ethel Fled before, there's a lot to love about her debuff her extra damage with the slowdowns and her extra attack so how can we use ethel flood in a way that maximizes all the things that she's good at without having her a, a huge target in the open field the answer is pairing her with tanky commanders as the primary commander so in this video i'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my favorite primary commanders for your ethel flood and the good news is that a lot of these commanders are very cheap investments you don't have to expertise these commanders in order for them to be useful as a primary to your beautiful ethel flood and richard being on the screen right now is no mistake okay he is my first recommendation as a primary for ethel flood and this is by the way in no particular order i'm not saying that richard is the best primary for ethel flood but he's one of them because he could be used as a 5511 right and you get a lot of the benefit of a richard Richard at 5511 for a fraction of the cost. You get the benefit of him being a Richard in the open field, which means he's less likely to be targeted. Now, of course, when they see the Ethel Flood behind him, then that probability goes up a little bit. But for the most part, they're not going to really see that Ethel Flood, in, especially in like a murder ball scenario. Why else is he great for Ethel Flood? His primary skill has an AoE debuff. It's an AOE. De five targets get slowed down by 30%. That's huge, which means five targets in the open fields are going to take 20% increased damage 
to her AOE. And guess what? Her AOE hits five targets. That is massive. It's almost like he was built to be a primary commander for Ethelflaed because he slows them first and then she hits them like a truck. Now, besides that, Richard is just incredibly tanky, which means you're going to keep your Ethelflaed alive for much longer. He's healing. He has damage taken reduction on this second skill, which is great. And he has the infantry and defense trees, which are better trees in my opinion than the talent trees that Ethelflaed has to offer so in all scenarios it just is a better use of Richard as a primary rather than a secondary to Ethelflaed okay so let me run you through some of the talents here that I think are important because the build you're looking at here is not the build that I would recommend if your Ethelflaed is secondary and why is that well for one elite soldiers and hold the line require that your entire army be infantry otherwise they don't do anything right it says only infantry units here it says only infantry units okay and when you're using ethel flood the primary strategy is going to be not to have full infantry but to have like 95 percent infantry okay so if i were to do a richard primary ethel flood secondary this is how i would go ahead and build my army so typically what i would do is i would reduce the amount of infantry by 10,000. so for me that brings it down to 200k for you it might be 190k if you don't have the same vip as me then i would do 5,000 of the cavalry and 5,000 of the archers now this applies for t4 t5 t2 whatever tier units you have this is the composition that i would go by and it seems to be the case that when a when an army uh gets beaten down in the open field it's typically the case uh from my experience that the troops uh deplete in a uh, in an, an amount that is the same ratio to which your army is built by them and i know that i probably just worded that terribly but basically what i'm saying is that it's not like all of your t5 uh, knights are going to be killed first and then all the t5 crossbowmen and then all of the t5 axemen right it's going to be because you have mostly infantry when you take damage you're going to lose more infantry than anything else because proportionately you have more of them. I hope that makes sense, right? So it's not like you're going to lose that 20% attack buff right away because you have so few of these others. Uh, you most likely are going to keep it for a while. If you want to play it safe, you could do, uh, you know, remove 20,000 from here and do 10 and 10. It's up to you guys. I just try to have the most amount of infantry possible because you do have the infantry tree and you do have some infantry skills here on Richard. And of course, we're going to be talking about other commanders besides Richard. So keep that in mind, but I'm just using this as an example. Okay. So back to the talent trees right back to the talent trees i showed you how i would build my army if i were going to do a richard primary ethel fled secondary uh, the talent build that i would use would be something more close to this right and this is key uh you may want to move these around a little bit okay you may want to put some of these points somewhere else and we'll get to that in just a second the key here is snare of thorns gives normal attacks a 10 percent chance to reduce target march speed by five percent for the next two seconds which means there's a 10 percent chance that you're going to deal 20 percent increased damage to that target because of ethel fled right so we're maximizing the number of ways that we get 20 percent increased damage and guys 20 percent increased damage is big especially because richard doesn't deal that much damage right let's just be clear here for a second right so you're getting a, the tankiness of richard and you're relying on ethel fled skill to deal that damage right um and you're also getting the debuff as a bonus remember 90 percent de decrease in stats for two seconds that's awesome and the more players that have it the better so Richard's primary skill slows them. Ethelflaed has a 10% chance of slowing them. And Snare of Thorns has a 10% chance of slowing them. So you're maximizing the opportunity to deal that 20% increased damage, which is huge. We also come over here. We get more normal attack damage just because that's really all that Richard has to offer. Um, we came over here, get 6% uh, infantry health, because again, you're going to be primarily infantry. I came over here and put two points into Desperate Elegy. I know that like maybe i should take away these these normal attacks here and put them into desperate elegy just because i made it all the way to this talent and, and you probably want to maximize the benefit of this right and a lot of people don't like this talent and i understand why because typically you don't want to be below 30 percent but let me just tell you uh you know with a richard in the open field he is so slow that you're probably going to get caught okay it's just realistically speaking if you're not right next to a city uh and you can't jump between nodes and stuff like that you're probably going to be caught in the open field. It's just, it is what it is. Okay. So 
if you don't like this talent that's fine you can remove these points and you could put them somewhere else okay you could put them in march speed if you want you can get some more health over here or you could really slow them down significantly with snare of thorns whatever you guys want to do that's up to you but i'm just giving you a sort of idea as to what i'm thinking okay we get extra healing factor here which is nice testudo formation is always good i love this talent i went and got balance and this does reduce the amount of damage that you're taking but again what you're really because I'm, because richard's not going to do that much damage anyway what you really want is the survivability so you can continue to apply the aoe debuff I also came down here, grabbed loose formation so that way you take less skill damage. I just didn't see a reason to go very far into the garrison tree. And, you know, furthermore, I don't really think these two, uh, two percent defense is that useful. I mean, you could do it. It's, it is what it is, right? So just to give you a general idea, you can skip these two talents. That's really what I'm trying to say here. Uh, so however you want to distribute the final couple of points, you can either go all the way here, or you could remove these, whatever you want. Now that I've explained sort of the theory behind the primary commander's role with Ethelfled as secondary, right? The, the, the purpose is to maximize Ethelfled's longevity. That's really what it is. Uh, it just so happens to be that Richard has a lot of ways of slowing the target as well, which maximizes damage. So that's awesome. Let's talk about some other pairings besides Richard. Okay. Because it's not just Richard. And again, I don't even think Richard is the best pairing, although he is very solid for all the reasons that we did just talk about. You could also do a five, five, one, one Constantine, right? I see no reason why you can't do this. Now you will probably be targeted a little bit more with a Constantine than you will with a Richard, because most people know that Constantine won't be expertise, right? Very few players have an expertise Constantine who are new to the game. If you have an expertise Constantine, you've probably been playing for a long time. I don't think there's a reason to expertise him anymore. It's not as good of an investment as it used to be. However, he does have that really, really solid primary skill. You're buffing your allies. You have a nice healing factor and you have a ton of infantry health, which is amazing. Now, as far as talents go for Constantine, he does doesn't have the slowdown on the active skill like Richard does, but he does have the support tree, which does the exact same thing. Whenever his active skill goes off, you get an AOE slowdown, right? And it may not be as good as Richard's uh, with four points here, but it is still nice. You get a maximum of five targets and it's for three seconds, which means that these, these slowdown targets are also going to be uh, still slowed by the time that Ethelflaed uses her active skill, which is your big damage dealer here because Constantine doesn't deal damage. You still have snare of thorns up here with the infantry tree so you still have plenty of ways of slowing down the enemy to maximize that damage from ethel flood now you see we went a little bit deeper into the infantry tree here because there's just nothing over here that i think is great in the support tree and, and you don't really have to max out cage of thorns right i prefer the extra health over here you get an extra two percent here you get extra defense over here i just love those uh talents i think it's just a little bit better than the other things that you have to, to pick from right but of course if you want to max out cage of thorns you can go ahead and do that I would probably remove remove one point of health maybe uh, because you already have a ton of health on a second skill but whatever you decide to do um, you could max this out if you want to and I think this would be an insanely good talent build with a primary 5511 Constantine cheap investment with Ethel fled as the secondary doing a ton of debuffing ton of AOE damage love it we talked a lot about infantry commanders so far so let's move over to Saladin Saladin is an insanely good primary for Ethel fled why because you can have a talent tree that looks like this you have the support tree right which is incredible we've already talked about this with Constantine the slowdown here is great buckler shield reduces that counterattack damage you're taking you also have an increased rage engine both here and with rejuvenate emblazoned shield is great for reducing skill damage taken which you're gonna be taking a ton of in the open field you also have halberd here so you can punish the archer players that you're seeing in the open field you're seeing a lot of ramses right now a lot of nebu a lot of ysg and guess what saladin reduces march speed with his primary skill as well so there's beautiful symmetry here with a saladin primary ethel fled secondary and the great news is that saladin is pretty much finished at five 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 one so you don't have to expertise this commander either he's a bit more of an investment than maybe richard or constantine but he's a little bit different and i think the synergy here is incredible you also get to use your ca uh, cavalry units rather than just infantry and he's nice and tanky as well but it wouldn't be an ethel fled guide if we didn't talk about trajan okay trajan primary ethel fled secondary is like a match made in heaven why is that right why is that well it's because they both don't care what troop type is in them and in fact they both have bonuses for having mixed troops which is not the same thing as the other commanders we've talked about he also can be incredibly tanky in the open field with 
which was the whole purpose behind the previous recommendations he also has the skill damage bonus and the rage restoration so he's much more supportive than the other commanders in the open field as well he gets a ton of stats regardless of the troops that you put inside of him and you also have the opportunity to have a really solid talent build for him as well okay you come over here you put two points in cage over here really you only need one I just didn't know where to put that last point armed to the teeth and armored to the teeth are a no-brainer for this troop composition obviously you could do 33 percent of each troop type or you could still maximize your infantry if you want that tankiness strategic prowess is going to make sure that your defense is increased by 20 percent when you use skills overall just a lot to love about this combination the only downside is that I really do think that you should expertise Trajan if you're going to do this because that gives you the most benefit of having a mixed army and it makes sure that this final skill has the most amount of points in it which is what's going to give you that tankiness that you need to keep this army alive and not only do you want to keep it alive for ethel flood's sake but now you also want to keep it alive for trajan's sake because he's very valuable for your allies as well so guys hopefully you found this video useful if you're a new player it gave you some insight as to the best ways you can use ethel flood if you're an old player that kind of wrote off ethel flood and forgot about her here are some new ways that you can add her back into your five marches if you found the video useful or informative make sure you drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdom slayers might see it as always if you're new around here make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a rise of kingdoms video comment your favorite ways to use ethel fled down below i would love to see your suggestions maybe i missed something huge i would love to hear it as always my social media links are in the description below so make sure you follow me over there on instagram facebook twitter discord all that stuff it's always down below as well as a link to download rise of kingdoms absolutely for free for your pc or your mac it's a program called blue stacks it's my favorite way to play the game i've used blue stacks for years even before my youtube channel it's a great program Program. if you don't like it you can always uninstall it but downloading it with my link does support the channel and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace